This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Success Mentorship Class number 282. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. Our topic for today is self-discipline is the bridge between success and accomplishment. Let's, let's rephrase that. Self-discipline is the bridge to freedom. Wow. If you want to be free, self-discipline is the, is the key. I like that. If you want to be free, self-discipline is the key. Of course, our message today is uh, based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. And in particular, chapters, chapter 11, The Law of Persistence, chapter 6, The Law of Focus, some of the key things that will help us be more disciplined. Lots of goodies are on our website, herbertharris.com. And of course, the success toolbox is, avail box is available there for you. Everything you need to get, anything you want. And our success t-shirts. Today's topic, as a matter of fact, I see on, one, on our success group today, Ricky Young, one of my favorite friends, a radio talk show host from New York City. And one of the things that Ricky always said, self-discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. So thank you so much for that, Ricky Young. Our topic today is self-discipline is the bridge to freedom. Socrates, Aristotle said something that has been echoed through the years through the ages, and he said, through discipline comes freedom. And Lamont said, all freedom comes from discipline. So clearly, discipline is one of the key elements of freedom. So you can't have freedom from financial problems. <laughs> Let's say you can't have freedom from lack if you don't discipline yourself to have a budget, if you don't discipline yourself to be very, um, well, what is the word, disciplined and controlled in your spending. Freedom from bad relationships if you're disciplined about who you permit yourself to interact with. Freedom from failures and disappointments unless you discipline yourself to make better choices. So there's definitely a connection between discipline and freedom. You won't have freedom without discipline. There's a great quote and it says, he who lives without discipline dies without dignity. I often wonder, what does that mean? He who lives without discipline dies without dignity. In other words, without discipline, you will not accomplish the purpose for which you were created. Without discipline, you will not accomplish your goals, your vision, and your purpose. So let's look at this discipline idea, because if it is that important, we must understand it first and then be able to work with it. First, there are two kinds of discipline. There's external discipline, where somebody else is telling you what to do on a job. A job tells you when to come, when to leave, and what to do. In the army, in the army, they tell you when to get up, when to go to bed, what to do. So this idea of discipline is clearly incorporated into the systems of life. We live successful lives because of discipline. So when you have a job, when you have anything that has a specific objective, discipline is built into it. On the other hand, we have self-discipline, and that is discipline from within. You are the one in charge. Many times when people become entrepreneurs, they realize why they had a job in the first place, that the purpose of that job was to give them the discipline that they did not have on their own, that they would not get up every day and be at their desk at 9 a.m. unless somebody told them to unless they had to be there. 
And so this idea of self-discipline is really saying you are now taking control of all the things that impact your life to make them work for you. And so when we look at where we are this year, as we are moving into really moving towards the, the fourth quarter, <laughs> we're well into the second half of the year, then discipline is one of the key skills that can help you get where you want to go. Discipline is the key skill that can help you move from dreaming to realization. So let's look at some of the keys to get there. I like to think of the steps to get to where we want to go, basically nine steps to help you become more disciplined. Number one, know your strengths and weaknesses. Anything that you want to do, be, and have over this cycle, you must first assess where you are. The GPS does not work unless it has two coordinates, a destination and a location. So assess where you are right now. Look at your strengths and weaknesses. The fact that you're on this call, the fact that you're up at 8 a.m. in the morning listening to this broadcast means that you are a dedicated person, dedicated to your success. And so then what do you have to do now to be successful, to accomplish your goals? So what are your strengths? Maybe you have good thoughts. You have positive thoughts, clarity of thought. You're confident. You believe in yourself. You have good habits. You exercise regularly. You foster good relationships. These are some of your strengths. You work well with people. You have good habits. You're committed. When you start something, you hang in there to the end. But then look at some of your weaknesses, some of the things that need to be worked on. I, I don't really like the term weaknesses, but let's look at areas where you could be better. I think that might be a better way to look at it. Let's look at areas where you could be better. Perhaps you need to manage your time much better. Not be distraction. Maybe you let things distract you and pulled you off course. Maybe you have a temper that somebody can push your buttons, man, and you go off the deep end. This assessment phase is critical because it now lets you know what you have to work with. And you got to be honest with yourself. If you're not honest with yourself, everything else is built on a lie. Also, as a part of this assessment, what motivates you? You know, there's internal motivation based on your desires and your dreams. And then there's that fear and reward mo motivation, which is more external motivation. You, we, you know, we learn it as children. Johnny, if you eat your vegetables, you'll get some candy. If you don't eat your vegetables, you're going to get a spanking. Fear and reward. Some people are motivated so much by fear and reward that that's all there is. Think about it. When you have a job, and I'm not knocking jobs. All of us have had jobs at some times. But in a job, the whole discipline system is also built, already built in. And the fear and reward system is built in. So if you come in late consistently, you're going to be fired. If you don't perform up to a certain level of, of expectation, you're going to be fired. Many of us live a life like that and be comfortable in it because we accept the parameters. We accept whatever that is that's, that's defining us. So we only fly as high as our job permits us. We only have as much freedom as our job gives us. But this, this self-discipline now, you can give to yourself what you need. So get away from fear and reward motivation, self-motivation based on what you want to be doing half. So step one, know your strengths and weaknesses. Assess your situation. Step two, you have to know your why. When we listen to people like Tyler Perry, when Tyler Perry talks about how he always wanted to, to make plays and to, to do movies, he always had a dream. Many of us on this call, on this broadcast today, have something we really want to be doing, have. Your why is critical. Because your why becomes a part of your vision. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So if you have no vision of what you want to be doing, have, 
you may not perish, but you will not achieve the purpose for which you were created. So know your why. Be really, really clear about your why. The reason that you are to be, the thing that is most important to you, your why may be helping the world. You look at a Dr. King, his why was to bring freedom and understanding and love to a world, and the world remembers him. You know, look at some of the others, their why. Tyler Perry wanted to be a great film producer, a great playwright. Other people wanted that, but he wanted it so badly. His why was so strong that it was big enough to overcome all challenges and opposition. So know your why. Have your vision clearly in your mind. So that then becomes the destination that you're willing to give everything to get to. Step three, clarify your goals. Once again, if you're on this broadcast, I guarantee that you're here because you have goals. You have something you want to be, do, and have. But if it's not working out that well for you, you need to clarify your goals. Break your goals down into specific steps. See your goals in every respect. See your vision in every regard. Once you see that why, once you see that vision, then the goals become the stair steps that lead you to the vision. So Kenya Crooks is a personal trainer. He didn't start out with muscles. <laughs> Ricky Young is a boxer. He didn't start out knocking people out. But once he had a vision of what he wanted to be, he was willing now to, to undertake the goals that will take you there, to do the trainings, to do the studies to do the marketing, to do all those things that will make you successful. So clarify your goals by writing them down. The spiritual principle, the Habakkuk says, write the vision, make it plain, that he may run that readeth it. In other words, once you begin to write your goals again, that are congruent with the vision you have of yourself, that he may run that readeth, readeth it, a part of the goal is the plan. You see, a goal that does not have a plan will never happen. And so this idea of clarifying your goals, and I mean all the goals, don't get so jacked up on the big goals that you don't see the small goals. One of the ways that we undermine ourselves is that we get so focused on the big goals that we don't do the little things to get to the big goals. And so look at your big goals and look at your small goals and make sure that they're congruent, that the small goals will lead you to the big goals. Step four, and this is hard, be accountable. In every sales organization, in every marketing organization, in every company, there's accountability. When you have a job, believe me, they're calculating how many widgets you put in the box. They're calculating your productivity. And when it drops below a certain level, they get rid of you. So be accountable for your success. And I recommend this, folks, to put the mastermind principle to work for you. If you are the scorekeeper and the scorer, <laughs> you may not keep score accurately. But when you find another person who is willing to hear your goals, willing to hear your dreams, and to be accountable so that you can be accountable to them, that's strong. Accountability is what makes things work. Be careful now who you share your goals and your vision with because it may be a person who's not on the level of consciousness that you need to have to support you in your mission. So we were talking about accountability and how important it is to stay disciplined and do what you must do. Be accountable. <laughs> Accountability to someone who sees your vision. Be very careful because there are people who don't see the vision. And when you share your vision with them, it's like an eagle trying to talk to a turkey. <laughs> okay? Eagles and turkeys don't talk the same language, but if an eagle asks a turkey, what's it like to fly? the turkey is going to tell him it's impossible. 
So be careful with whom you share your vision to be accountable. Step number five, remove distractions and temptations. Now, this is something profound. If you have temptations and you're on your journey to be, do, and have that that you desire, get the temptations out of the way. I'm going to hold up a little wrapper here. This is one of my temptations. These little, uh, what do you call them? Now or laters. Okay. And what I have found is if I buy a pack, I will eat the whole pack. Now, you may have the same situation yourself. And so what I have to do in order to get rid of the now or laters and all that damage that the sugar does, I can't bring them in the house. And so that's kind of my agreement with myself. I like them, but I leave them in the car. So the only time I can have a now or later is when I'm driving. You have to look at the things that distract you, the temptations that pull you away from your goal and get them out of your life. Distractions suck up your energy. Phones, these things right here, we just experienced that. Phones suck up your time. One of the fears I have for our children is so often, when I was a kid, and I'm sure many, when many of you were children, you couldn't call your mom or dad anytime something happened. You had to handle it and get back home. We have so many children now that the moment something happens, the kid has a flat tire. Instead of fixing the tire, they call their dad or call their mom. And so this is a whole nother level that, that these computers, these phones, distractions that take us away from our goals. Step six, start small. You see, it's a way that we can undermine ourselves by setting a goal so big that we don't even know we didn't fail, that we don't even know we failed until the time to make it happen has passed. Big goals are always based on small goals. And so when you commit to start small in this discipline, so when you're in a gym with the with Kenya, with Ricky Young, you don't run in there and start with 50 push-ups. You do, let me do four. Tomorrow, let me do five. You start small, and there's something about accomplishing small things that prepare you for larger things. I'll give you a secret, folks. If you write out your daily goals that will lead you to your monthly goal, and if you execute each daily goal successfully, the monthly goal is taken care of. If you execute each daily goal successfully, the weekly goal is taken care of. So every goal can be broken down to actions you can do right now, today, this day. So start small. Focus on those small actions to build your self-discipline. Your discipline is like a muscle. The more self-disciplined you are, the more you do it, the stronger you get. Very often, we can use little victories to help us get big victories. You know, when you're facing a challenge, you say, think about David and Goliath. <laughs> think about that. If David and Goliath, if Goliath could, uh, if David and Goliath are standing there on the field, and in, after David slew Goliath, Anything else was really academic. The next giant coming along, David didn't even have to talk. He said, I'm the guy that slew Goliath. So if you don't want to die, get out of my way. So start small and build to bigger steps. Practice daily diligence in the starting small. And do the small things with the same level of integrity that you want to do big things. There's a scripture that says the way you do small things are the way you do big things. Step seven, forgive and reward. Nobody's perfect. And when we start on this growth journey, one of the things that happens, we get messed up. We fail. We say we're going to do something and then we don't get it accomplished. We set out with five things to be done today and we only do two of them. Well, forgive yourself for that poor performance and learn from it. 
You know, it may be that when you get to the end of the day and you had five things to do and you only did two, when you look back and analyze, you say, you know what? I let other people's challenges interrupt me. I let somebody else pull me off course. I got involved watching this TV program and I looked up two hours had slipped away. So the thought is, forgive and reward yourself. When you do good, pat yourself on the back. When you set out to do five things and you get to the end of the day and all five things are accomplished, celebrate. <laughs> That's one of the beautiful things about having an accountability partner. You call them up. You all should have some type of cycle where you talk. When I was building my network marketing business, my accountability partner used to call me every day at four o'clock. Man. And there were days when I had not done what I should have done. <laughs> and I... When that four o'clock call at 3.30, I start hustling. I was supposed to make 10 calls. Let me make them quickly. Let me make them quickly. So this idea of accountability, when you couple it with fear and reward, it helps motivate you and guide you to get things done on a daily level. Number eight, monitor your progress and make adjustments. Once you've committed to this self-discipline journey, then you have to be aware at the end of each day how you're doing. If you monitor your progress on a daily basis, you can rectify and fix it so the next day you can do a little better. I recommend what I call 12, 4, and 8. 12 o'clock each day, 4 o'clock each afternoon, 8 o'clock each night, do a monitor, do a checkup. You see, when you look at your 12 o'clock checkup, if you spend an hour talking to somebody that you really shouldn't have been talking to, you can now say, let me make up for that between 12 and 4. I don't have to wait until the end of the day to realize that I wasted two hours talking to somebody I didn't need to be talking to in the first place. The 8 o'clock checkup now is where you review the day and say, okay, wow, I forgot this. I didn't do that. Now this sets you up to plan for the next day. So if you do the 12, 4, and 8, you'll find that that 8 o'clock checkup sets you up so that tomorrow will probably be much more productive than today. So review, monitor your progress, and then make adjustments. A little aside on this from a military point of view is to always have a backup plan. I won't go into that now, but think about this. Always have a backup plan. You know, thinking about Muhammad Ali and the fight, the rumble in the jungle, I guess his backup plan was if he couldn't dazzle him with his footwork, he'd outlast him with his, with his um, commitment to win. So think about that. Just always have a plan B, no matter what. And then finally, step nine, keep going and growing through practice, practice, practice. There's no way to build muscles without daily exercise. There's no way to accomplish dreams without daily execution of an effective plan. So when we can look at these nine steps that will help you develop your self-discipline to the level where it becomes a fountain for power. So your self-discipline becomes the wind beneath your wings. When you can take the things that you have developed through self-discipline and commit them to habit so that you don't even have to think about it anymore, then you literally free your mind to higher thoughts. So let us review and wrap up this morning. Self-discipline is the bridge to freedom. Through self-discipline, you can free yourself of the things you don't want. And you can free yourself to enjoy the things you do want. Discipline from within is the most powerful form of discipline and the only form of discipline to take you to where you really want to be. Follow these nine steps. Assess your strengths and weaknesses. Understand what motivates you, step one. Step two, to know your why. And that why should be so strong, your why should make you fly. Not cry. Your why should make you fly, fly. And it should be so strong that your why translates into a vision 
which takes us to step three, and your vision translates into goals. Clarify your goals, not just your big goals, but your little goals so that you can see them, feel them, touch them, and smell them. Number four, be accountable. Have somebody who holds your feet to the fire, who makes sure that you deal with each day in the way that is most effective to get what you need to get. Number five, remove distractions and temptations. Get them out of your way. Understand that distractions, no matter how good, the better the distraction, the worse it is. When you move, dis remove distractions and temptations, you can again give your psychic energy direction to flow. Number six, start small. Be aware of the power of small activities and getting positive results. When you can have those small victories, small victories lead to big victories. Number seven, forgive and reward. Forgive yourself for lack of performance, but also learn from each stage, learn from each activity, and then commit to improve so that you say every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Reward yourself, pat yourself on the back, and acknowledge when you've done a good job. Number eight, monitor your progress and make necessary adjustments. And monitor your progress on a daily level, and I recommend the 12, 4, and 8 level to evaluate where you are at 12 noon, 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. so that you can make today your day for great success. And you can say at the end of today, I did everything I could with what I had to do it with. And then finally, number nine, keep going and growing. Practice, practice, practice. The only way to get where you want to go, to be what you want to be, is to consistently get better and grow through it so that you can go to it. When you can do these nine things, when you can use, you will learn to perfect and use the power of self-discipline to create the life of your dreams. And you can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire, always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. To take a deep breath for a moment and let it out. But thanks for being with us on, on Facebook and those on the Zoom. Please can hold on for our discussion that we'll have in a moment. Remember this, to visit our website. You can see our website, herbertharris.com. Be sure to get your copy of the Success Toolbox, and then you'll have everything you need to get anything you want. And check out our new Success T-shirts. <laughs> it has a logo of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. And my friend Ricky Young in New York developed the first success t-shirt. So kudos off to you, Ricky. So folks, this, remember this. You can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire, always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is.